What kind of capitalism does Angela Merkel and Mr. Macron bring to Quebec today? I mean, Jerry Z. Muller has been so great about continental capitalism. What is their view of capitalism in this fractured G7 that they're going to bring and really push up against Mr. Trump? Well, they are still the, the, the classic neoliberals, and particularly Macron is a classic neoliberal, believing that the more you deregulate, the more you let markets take over, take over the better uh, economic systems function. Uh, people living in the UK have had 40 years of English privatised railways to uh, decide whether that actually works or not, and they go to work on museum pieces which are totally crowded and unair conditioned, travel over to the continent, find the government runs uh, stations of, of cheaper, better trains and air conditions. So uh, the contrast is there, but they are still selling the neoliberal liberal pill. And uh, Trump, uh, if, if the neoliberal trill had, had, had worked, you wouldn't be interviewing me on this program. Yep. Okay? So there's a central way in which it's failed, and Trump is at least voicing that. Whether what he's doing is accurate or not is another story, but he will not listen to that spin for a start because he doesn't read books. Well, Steve, on that point about whether Trump has a point in what he's saying or not, putting the manner in which he's mm. managing things aside, does he actually have a point he when it comes to the US losing out in terms of yeah. the import costs um, uh, that the EU puts, but also defence spending? Well, it's, I mean, those things are a part of it. But I, think, I think the real ultimate target of this is China. Right. Okay. And uh, in, in, the, in the case of, of China, in particular, he's arguing the currency has been undervalued. Uh, they have used a loophole, which is a deliberate loophole for the benefit of developing countries in the American trade legislation going back about 40 years. And I was in, in China at the, when they were constructing the Shenzhen Free Trade Zone. I was literally there when they were laying the concrete and met with the people managing that. Uh, and they, their vision was to, t to attract American corporations with incredibly low wages, hmm. pretty much paying for one month's labour what they had to pay for one day's labour in the America and at the same time saying once you bring over, once you establish a firm here, you must have a Chinese partner and the Chinese partner within five years must own 50% of the business. Yeah. Now you think what an enormous attraction the low wage cost was to make that feasible. They took advantage. That's where Foxconn came from. So China was deliberately creating a capitalist class, deliberately getting the American technology. They've done it brilliantly. But in the process, of course, American corporations have screwed their workers, which of course is a popular American sport. And, uh, and then the American workers are now complaining through the only method they have, which is no longer trade unions, it's the ballot box. So with where we are now, who is going to back down first or are we actually set for an all-out trade war? I think we're set for, I wouldn't call it an all-out trade war, I think we're mm. set for a trade war because Trump will not back down. Trump will not be persuaded that this is in your mutual interest. And I saw a great little, uh, on Twitter, a, a nice little argument from somebody, rather, I can't remember who right now, saying that when you look at what Trump, Trump's attitude is always a deal maker and he believes there's always a winner and a loser in every deal. So if you try to persuade him there could be two winners, he's going to say, forget it, doesn't happen. I'm going to be the winner and therefore I'm going to go ahead with this. And Macron and my Merkel will turn themselves blue trying to persuade him that they can both win and that's guaranteed not to persuade him. I guess him. he hasn't heard of the word compromise. Oh no. <laughs>